Today in Chris Performance Repair, we're going to talk a little bit about engine swapping. Now, this particular vehicle is not an engine swap vehicle, but it's been brought to my attention several times now, people asking me about engine swaps particularly. So we're going to do a little bit of a raw video here. I'm not going to do much editing. It's on a crappy camera, but you really don't need that because I'm going to pop up some images on the screen. However, this particular vehicle happens to be a 5.3 Sierra. Now, what I am getting asked about multiple times, time and time again, is I have a 6.2, I have a 6 liter, I have a 5.3, whatever. Can I swap over to any of the other options? Yes, you can. However, there's a lot of caveats involved in doing this. First and foremost, you need to make sure you're in the right generation of engine, right? So GM LS based engines go all the way back to the mid 90s in like the Trans Am and stuff like that. Trans Am, Camaro, things like that. I think the, the mid to late 90s, they started implementing the LS1, but that was a 5.7. Completely different engine for the most part um, as far as engine swapping goes. So back then, it was a, I think it was a 20, 28X crank trigger. And I'm going to mention this because this is very, very important. Um, that's how they started with a 28X crank trigger. It had knock sensors in the valley cover. It had the 1X camshaft timing trigger. So that was back then. Now they are on a, um, what is it, a 58X, I think, crank trigger and a 4X cam trigger. So you need to make sure you have the correct cam and crank trigger. So you need to make sure the era is correct. Of course, there is several different series. There's Gen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? 5 being the LT based and beyond. The Gen 1 and 2 are basically knock sensors in the valley cover area, and including the Gen 3. Now, there is a Gen 3, 4 kind of a weird mix up between them, and that one is where they had, like, they're preparing for the Gen 4. So they had the, the newer valley cover, and it's, it's kind of confusing, and that's around the 2004 era. Most of the people I'm getting asked about are past the 2004 era, and they're asking me specifically about, like, the 2006, 7-ish, all the way up to 2013, basically. And that is the Gen 4 specific engine series for these GM engines. They were in the trucks, mostly the trucks, the SUVs, things like that. They also had them in cars, the LT4, but that's that's a whole other story. We won't get into that. Um, so we're going to talk specifically about the trucks. Now, what you need to make sure is that you have one within this range, so it does have the 58X crank trigger and the 4X cam trigger. Now, the camshaft part of it, you need to make sure that whatever engine you get also has or does not have a VVT according to your particular engine if you don't want to get too involved with too much complication. So, for example, if you have, um, let's say they're, they're, the backwards compatibility is great. If you have a VVT engine that is equipped with variable valve timing and you want to put a non-variable valve timing engine in, very, very easy to do. Literally, you could just put the engine in, turn it off in the tune of the engine. Simple, right? No big deal. As long as you keep the same displacement. You, you literally just have to turn that off in the tune and you're done. It, it'll work perfectly fine. Make sure you use the injectors from your old engine, things like that. That way you have the same fuel parameters. Make sure it's similar in airflow characteristics. You don't get a weird cylinder head of, of, of different characteristics. That's, pr that's not likely to happen. Now, if you're doing a 6.2 and you're trying to put a 5.3 in, First of all, I really don't recommend it because the 6.2 is probably in there because it's a heavier vehicle. It's most likely an Escalade or something that's rather heavy and needs that extra horsepower and torque. However, if you want to do it because it's what you have available, you've got a deal on one, whatever, as long as your 6.2 did not have VVT or, or does have VVT, you could pretty much pick anything you want. You're going to have to do some tuning, though. You're going to have to change the computer to have different fuel and timing parameters along with change the whatever VVT or non-VVT it has. If you have one without VVT, 
and without DOD, um, but you're trying to put one in that has VDP and has DOD, that's not going to be good. That's not going to work. Uh, you're going to have to get a different wiring harness. It's going to be a it's going to be a mess to do. It's not going to be simple. It's doable, but it's not going to be simple. And your best bet then is when you get the 5.3, you get one with a computer and a harness. That'll simplify things hugely, right? You might have some security issues. I don't know about that portion of it, but it is going to make things a lot simpler. Um, if you want to do the swap and a computer is available and your wiring harness isn't going to be an issue compatibility wise because of VVT or whatever, that's basically the big difference is, is with or without VVT, with or without AFM. Uh, pretty much most of them of that era are going to have AFM unless it's a 2500 that you got it out of or that you're putting it into. A 2500 does not have AFM, most likely does not have VVT, but it very well could have VVT. Now, VVT, variable valve timing, I better explain it quick, is where it can take the camshaft and change the timing of the camshaft to optimize it for torque or horsepower. That way you get a little more oomph when you need it, right? So otherwise, if you don't have VVT, your timing is set, it's static, it doesn't move, your horsepower and torque curve is just where it is, there's nothing you can change about it. If you have VVT, you might have more horsepower up here with the cam set at a certain position, and as it moves the position of the cam timing, that, that horsepower will shift over and so will the torque. So it will shift the cam timing to make more torque when you're down low RPM. And then as the RPMs go up, it shifts the cam timing the other way to give it more horsepower. It kind of gives you an advantage in gaining and losing horsepower and torque. So moral of the story, things can get complicated, but it's very, very, very possible to swap over two different engines. Let's say, uh, let's say you've got a 5.3 Chevy Tahoe, right? You're always hauling a lot of family around, and you want a little more power, and the engine just happened to blow up. You, you had a bad motor, so now you need to replace it, and you want to you want to upgrade, but you don't want to spend a bunch of time and money rebuilding an engine to make it have the power you want. Well, you could go to a 6.2. The 6.2 has its problems. I know. I'm not going to get into that on that video. If you did want to go to 6.2, regardless of whatever problems it has, because you wanted the extra displacement for the extra power, you could certainly do so. Make sure you get a complete 6.2. And by complete, I mean it has the intake. The intake is different. It has to have the oil pan intake, the whole nine yards with it, so you don't have to worry so much. Make sure the injectors are there. The intake between the um, 5.3 and the 6 liter is the same. The 6.2 has a different intake because it has different cylinder heads. But it does run off the same exact computer system. All the wires and everything should plug in. As long as you're within a few years of the era, you shouldn't have different injectors or anything as far as the connector goes. And you should be able to plug it in. This is not a set guarantee, but it's very, very most likely the case. So you can get a complete engine, and you would be able to tune the computer to work for it. If you can get a complete engine with a computer, then you could certainly just drop the whole works and harness and all and do the plugs in the firewall, things like that. And it should just simply work unless the security becomes a problem. I know security is one of those hairy topics that can be a, a bit hairy. So if you want to find that information... You're going to have to go to somebody else for that because I don't know it. I'll just be straight. I don't know it, right? So that's pretty much it for engine swapping. Pretty quick, dirty video. I wasn't going to really make a crazy video. It's been a long time since I've made a video. And um, I just wanted to make sure I get this out there because I literally today had a guy ask me again for the umpteenth time about swapping engines. I'm not complaining. It's just... I've been asked a lot, and it'd be nice for me to be able to just say, hey, check this video out. That'd be nice and simple, right? So there you have it. That's your engine swap stuff. There's other things. Oiling. Some are with and without oil cooler, but that's easy. It's like a plate that unbolts. Oh, actually, I'll show you on this one. So with the oil cooler, see this little block here? Some of them will have just a plate over top of that. If it doesn't have an oil cooler, this one has an oil cooler, so it has the block that has the lines going to the front. 
So that's that's that as far as that goes. This truck's actually going to be for sale eventually. I bought it, or I'm going to buy it from the customer because he didn't want to do the work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a bunch of rebuilding on it. If you're interested, leave a comment below. If you want to know anything else as far as engine swapping or whatever goes, feel free to leave a comment below. Like, share, subscribe. Hopefully I'll get back on here and start posting more videos. With that, we will see you guys later. Don't forget to check out my Rumble. I'm possibly, it's in the works, I'm considering posting a bunch of random videos there and not making it exclusively an automotive channel. I do a lot of things from solar systems to gardening to all, you name it, I do it. I mean, there's not a thing I don't touch. So I'm thinking about putting a second set of videos on there, but right now I'm too busy to have the time to do the videos. So that's why you haven't seen a video from me in a minute. I will see you guys on the next one. Hopefully you like this video, this little tidbit and, uh, yeah, I'll try and get more videos up, but I'm, I'm working on it, man. I'm working on it. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys on the next one. Later.